Now that I've created these shapes, the outer set is for my labels and the inner set is for my actual uh, paragraphs of my data. So I need to create a, a guide using the ellipse and I'm going to hold down Alt again and Shift and I'm going to go just inside those outer shapes and that's going to become the shape upon which my lettering goes. So if I click on Fill and kill that, it'll be a little bit distracting. I do like to make stuff visible that's going to stay or, or go, and that red's going to go. And when I use this using type on a path, that shape will disappear and, and the type will remain. So I've got some dates I want to put on here. Uh, so I'm going to click on the starting point for my text. And we go 1990. Oh, that's huge. So I'm going to go back to that and use the character uh, panel to reduce the size of that text. Uh, not that much, I guess. And let's see, that's probably big enough, I guess. So then I got that, and I'm going to probably go back a little bit before this just to make that space out where I want it to start because I want to sort of center that in the shape. Okay, now I could keep doing that same thing for each individual piece of text, or I can put them all right here where I want them and align them all in the same piece. So, I don't know why I have 1990 there. That should be 1455. That's when the Gutenberg movable type printing press was, was created. So, the next one is 1780. Uh, that would be when Franklin discovered electricity. It was already there. He just didn't know how to use it yet. So, now we get 1876. I think that's Bell and the telephone. And now I'm going to space some more. And I got 1888. I believe that has something to do with the phonograph. I don't really remember exactly, exactly. I got 1888. I should have one more date in here. So I'm just going to throw one in like 1890. And some more spaces. And 1890. So I can adjust these. As you can see, this 8, 1780 one is back. So I can hit that, and I can move things around. I want to try to get things aligned. And at this point, it's kind of a visual game. There may be other ways to get it done. But uh, as I work my way through this, I'm pretty happy. And that's how I get the, the basic labels in place. Now, it may, be one, it may be desirable to make the text stand out a bit more. And one way to do that is to use my layers panel which I collapsed and there's those shapes and there's these shapes so I'm going to take these shapes and I'm going to not make them completely bold in color let's say I want to use a blue and I want to use full on blue if I use HSB settings I want to reduce my saturation by dragging it left or if I choose S for saturation saturation up and down that way and that way if it's too saturated it won't uh, be too distracted okay now I'm also going to take off the, the stroke around the outside and I can add that back if I want to later but now it's starting to look kind of graphical and, and it's nice so if I lock that and I double click on this I can go back in and correct make adjustments as I see fit based on how it's looking okay next we're going to try to put the paragraph text inside those shapes So in this part of the tutorial, we're going to put the text in place that goes in the side of the shapes. Now, I kind of have to keep in mind when I do this that the size I'm looking at is not the eventual size. That on the screen, that maybe uh, says it's two inches, but it's actually about an inch. So if I go and double up my size on my print, that may be closer to the real size. So this is actually pretty big. So I can make my text smaller if I want to. Want to. But I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to use my magnifying glass to see just the shape I'm in. Maybe a little bit closer with Control Plus just to bring it up Ooh, too much. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the text I already put in place. All my work is gone. There we go. And what I'm going to use is one of these shapes that's down here. So I'm going to take a copy of this group and lock and hide the original. Let's select this new copy and object ungroup and I'm only going to use one of these objects so I select those and delete them and I select these 
and I delete. And the box selection method I just used selects everything inside the box that I draw with my cursor, with my mouse. So if I collect that, that's too much. So once you make a selection, always inspect your selection to make sure it's correct. Now what I want to do is make a basic setup for this. And I wonder, I actually don't know the answer, what happens if I type in here? Is it going to go inside the shape or is it going to go horizontal? So if I say good and yeah, see it's going straight. That's not what I'm after. I want the thing to go. Okay, so there's this. What I want is for the text to go with the shape, and then I'm going to rotate the shape. So what I have to do is remember the uh, rotate tool, and I'm going to give it a specific number. Now the width of this thing is about 27 degrees. So 27 divided by 2 is, gee, I believe it's 13.5. Uh, so that centers it. It looks like it's a little bit off. Let's go negative 14. Eh, negative 13. So sometimes I experiment until it looks right for me. And now I've got the shape that is the starting point for my... Um, I'm going to make a template and copy it out. So if I use the area type tool, click on the object, and then type into my text. Now I'm going to start with Gutenberg Press. I guess I should pay attention to my caps and hope I'm spelling it right. And collect, select all, and I want to make sure I'm using centered text. Okay, so that's now going to be the template for everything I do. So you may recall, again, the rotate tool, and I alt click on the center point of my circle. And I did some math earlier, and based on where this is, I don't want it to go 13 forward, I want it to go back to my starting position and I did a little bit of math and got 66.5 percent uh, degrees excuse me now I can see that this shape is not quite lined up with that so I'm gonna go maybe 67 until I'm happy with the way it looks let's try 68 okay yeah 67 looks like it was the one so there's that and I click okay now, next, I'm going to copy. So that, that one, I was just moving it. This time, I'm still using Rotate. Alt-click on that center point. And the amount that it moves when I copy this is going to be negative 27 degrees. And that looks pretty good. And I click Copy. Now it gets easier because all I have to do is, having entered that value in, click Copy each time until I have all my areas set up. Now, clearly, the Gutenberg Press does not work for all these dates. That's just crazy. You can't have the same historical thing happening repeatedly without somebody getting hit to the fact, hey man, that already happened. So what I want to do next is since the text is rotating with the objects, I'm going to go to my next time period here using my area type tool and I can click on this object and now I can select all, control A, and I can type in the fact that it's 1780, Franklin, yes, he's the guy in the $100 bill. Who knows what else he did? Lots of stuff. Cool guy. Franklin discovers. I'm always worried that at that size I can't see. And I'm pretty sure I spelled it wrong. Electricity. 1876. So I can select there and select all. And I believe 1876 is. Now I have to go look at my notes. 1876, we got Bell invented the telephone. So for a long time, phone companies all had the name Bell in them. Edison Bell, Pacific Bell, etc. So I can do that to change all these out. Now, that because I made a copy of that object, I still have these shapes back here. So uh, because I had a little bit of an issue there apparently with my uh, text being right at the edge of the shape. I can actually take this and correct myself. And let's lock everything else just to make sure I only select one thing. Let's see if I can use the path, offset path. Let's preview that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I have the offset. So that if I, uh, you know, what I don't like about that is the spaces between my boxes are lost. So let's select that again. Let's try it one more time. Path, Offset, I can Preview, Preview is a good thing. So instead of using what appears to be an eighth of an inch, 
let's go with 0.05 and I'm just looking to make the shapes taller there's a couple of ways to get the job done but uh, essentially that's what we can do we can also take if we want to let's lock this and unlock our text we could simply shrink that down or not 